Hello and welcome. It is time for the autumn art special on the Ms. Artastic YouTube channel. I am so glad that you have decided to join me because my friend, we are about to dive in on a seriously fabulous autumn or fall adventure where you're gonna watch me paint a fabulous autumn pumpkin painting. Yeah, so I'm gonna be using some acrylic paint and I gotta, well, let's get rid of these. Uh, and trade that for a lovely canvas. So I'm just gonna be using this lovely canvas. This one's from the dollar store, yep. Just a wood, wood panel canvas from the dollar store. So if you're wanting to try a painting as well, you can grab some acrylic paint. Uh, note that acrylic paint is permanent, so don't get it on your clothes. Uh, or if you just wanna watch me create this lovely autumn painting. So let's dive into this autumn special episode. this painting um, getting the base layer on just just going to prime your canvas it could be used for acrylic and oil uh, paint um, and just really increases opacity coverage and adhesion um, so that way your paints gonna stick yeah All right, so the first step that we're gonna be doing is sketching out a design on here. So you can use either pencil or you can use uh, charcoal. I'm gonna be using charcoal uh, today for sketching it just so it has a nice dark underlayer. And then we're gonna put our wash on and then get started. Woo! So we're gonna be doing a lovely pumpkin. So I'm gonna be starting off at the top with a stem, which is gonna give it a nice oval shape. Doesn't have to be perfect. Pumpkins are all different, so we don't need to worry about any of that. I'm gonna get a twisty stem. So I'm gonna start on one side here. Draw a line that curves around. And then when I start in the middle, draw another line that curves around and down. I'm gonna come over here. Draw one that folds, that folds in the back. And then maybe this one's gonna have a bit of a wave. I want them all to come down to different lengths on purpose. These little lines, really even bend them. And then we're gonna connect them with, with some curvy lines. So that way it creates more of a realistic stem shape. So next I'm just gonna sketch the shape of my pumpkin. We're gonna start off on either side where the stem is here. I'm gonna bring just sketch, you see how there's lots of rough marks. Don't worry that there's lots of different lines here. I'll pick my favorite at the end, right? So I'll pick my favorite lines at the end. That's what sketching is all about. I'm just gonna add a line down so I don't like that oval. So I'm gonna sketch that. It back up. Don't worry about mistakes. We're just going to leave them because we're going to paint on top. We don't need to worry. This is all about sketching and getting our ideas out. <clears throat> okay, so next I'm going to start off with two curvy lines on either side, up and over. It's like drawing a very big letter C. Curve it down. than the rest to create a sense of depth before shortening in my artwork. And bring it another side down, so it's like a packing backwards letter C. Again, I want these layers to be a little higher than the front because I want this piece to be closest to the viewer. Here. 
Now I'm liking the border around. I have enough negative space. It, for mine, it feels right. So now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna add a little piece in the back here by adding a nice curving line. So it looks like we have one that's hiding in the back. Even though we can't see it, we know there's a back side of a pumpkin. So we're going to allude to that. Now this is just a nice autumn pumpkin. So you always can add some other autumn elements into your work, artwork. So maybe you want to have some autumn leaves falling down. You can draw some leaves. To make your background a little bit more visually interesting, or you can think about all the different things that you might see in autumn. Such as acorns. Maybe you have a little chipmunk. Now we need to make this extra cute, right? So we're gonna add some lovely cute details onto your pumpkin. Uh, so I'm gonna be adding a face on mine. I'm gonna draw a line across the middle in this middle section here, line. And I'm gonna connect it with, there's a little low on the side. I feel like my, okay, we're gonna connect it with the letter U. From one corner down to the bottom, we're gonna draw a curving line to make a tongue. And add little curving lines in the corner of the mouth. Now, we're gonna put a finger space and go to the next section here. And we're gonna draw a circle. So we want it to be a finger space away. We're gonna draw a circle in this section. Finger space is about enough to add a circle in this section here. We want them in line. We want it in line with the mouth. We don't want the eyes up here. Here, this makes it nice and extra cute. And then in each eye, we're gonna do one big circle and one small circle. And we want the big circle to be in the same spot on both eyes, otherwise it's going to be looking in different directions. Which if you want that, that's totally cool. And if you don't, then we add the big circle and small circle in the same spot. We're also going to mark off where we're going to have some shiny spots. And I like to add shiny spots with curving, le uh, curving rectangles or you could do curving triangles and that's a great way to add. Shiny spots, and I like to draw them on because I don't want to paint on those areas. I want them to leave them white. So I'm marking them off so I don't paint. Now once you're ready, you can get out oh, your paints. Now I don't like to use crazy amounts of paint brushes. Um, I have my very, very few favorites and I'm going to stick with my favorite brushes. I have lots of brushes, um, but I always feel like as an artist, I grab the same ones and I can tell be that I use the same ones because some of my brushes look like this still, no paint on them. But then I have ones that I use all the time and you can see that there's the colors peeling off, they're really well used, um, but I look after them and I make sure I wash them nicely and I pull my bristles straight every time and that way they all stay nice. And that's the lovely thing about paintbrushes is they'll last forever if you take care of them. All right, I also have, so basically what you need for paintbrushes is one bigger one and one small one. That's the minimum that you need. A big one and a small one and something to mix your paint with. This is a, called a palette knife. You don't need to have a palette knife. Uh, in fact, you can just use a popsicle stick. I don't need my pencils anymore, but I am ready to do a wash. So we're gonna do an orange wash today. Um, that way we eliminate this white so we can see our whites when we start using them. To make orange. Now red is pretty powerful, so we only need a little bit of red and we need more. Now when we put paint on red and we add a dot of yellow and then we can mix our up our orange. Now it doesn't need to be a perfect orange because we're not painting the pumpkin, we're just doing a background wash. We need to eliminate, mix some water into mine. To thin it out, we don't want it to be fully thick. So I need some water and then I want to go up and down and add my wash. Now it's nice and thin so that way I can still see my details underneath. It'll go on nice and smooth. One, because we've added 
our gesso so the canvas is not going to absorb all the water and all the paint. But also, I don't remember what I was talking about, so pop that. Okay, so now I've mixed up some red, yellow on my palette. I mean red orange on my palette, which means I have more red. I've again mixed up my paint. I've added more red than yellow, and we're gonna add it to the background here to create, um, start creating some darker values on this pumpkin. Just on the painting, working where we think there might be some darker values. I'm starting where they'll be overlapping of the folds of the pumpkin. Be adding my paint there first. As you can see, we can still see the pencil lines, but they're beginning to fade as we begin to add some layers of pumpkin, or <laughs> layers of pumpkin, layers of paint. Okay, I'm also gonna go on the outer edge because I would like that to be a little bit darker. And you can see I got have paint on my areas where I'm blocking them off. We don't worry about that. And don't worry about your outer edge as well because we will paint in a background later. So this is not our background color. It'll become something later. Gonna increase the darkness. Even darker shadows. So it's gonna be a smaller area where we add this. And we wanna make sure we put it where there's very dark values. So just along these lines and along the bottom. I want to use on mine. So you can mix up your orange, uh, red and yellow, mix it up, more yellow makes it brighter and less red. And we're going to add that now into the in-betweens. So we don't want to cover up all the lovely dark values that we've created. So we're going to be mindful not to lose that. We're going to work our way and start adding orange oops, ah, into the center areas.
Okay, so now we're going to create the background. So we're gonna pick a lovely background color for our autumn artwork. Um, I think I'm gonna do some browns. Browns and maybe yellow and white, but you can pick whatever colors you want. I'm just thinking for me about some autumn colors. Um, again, pick whatever colors really make you happy. You can even do a lizard and crimson. Ooh, yeah. Get some, maybe I'll, maybe I'll do some brown there. A little, not a lot. Um, so I got brown, a lizard and crimson. Uh, maybe I'll put a little bit of yellow in here. If I don't use it in my um, background, then I can use it for the rest of my pumpkin as we continue to add layers. Now I just want different values, all different places. So I'm just gonna go around and add different swatches, eventually letting my colors mix and blend together. So I'm just gonna add swatches here and there. That's your opportunity now to tidy up your lines and really adjust the composition to how you want. We're gonna edit all our outlines. Now I have a round paintbrush here, but I can turn it on its side and really get into those corners, which is why you don't need a lot of paintbrushes as an artist, because you can change the pressure of how uh, firmly or softly you press, right? To make a thin line or a thick line, right? You can change it just by how hard or softly you press, but also the different angles, right? This is a flatter, this is gonna make a bigger mark versus if I hold it this way, gonna make a much smaller mark. So you can do that to play around with instead of switching all your paintbrushes all the time. All right, so we're gonna be adding more orange. So I've mixed up another orange here. Just mostly the same value, but I just wanted to thicken it up now that we have and tidy up some of the edges now that we got our background painted in. just sit on top of be thin so that way you can see the orange below peeking through and we're also going to add this yellow to the autumn leaves in the background extend some of this yellow, I think along the edge here, so it looks like there's a bit of a glow. And it'll also help create a bit of contrast between the pumpkin and the background. We want it to look separate. We don't want the pumpkin, oops, there's black on my brush. We don't worry about mistakes though, we just work them in.
So now I'm gonna go and finish up in my final details. So uh, painting black again on the eyes and the mouth because you can see it's not thick enough. Uh, the white will be need to be redone. I need to outline the uh, leaves a little bit more, maybe the acorn, the final textures, and then the final white highlights on the pumpkin before we're done. Okay, so I got the highlights on the leaves and the acorn. Um, so now we're just going to finish up uh, by adding some highlights. Well, we gotta fix the eyes because it's not bright enough uh, and add highlights on the pumpkin. And then those will be the final details of our pumpkin. And we'll have the most contrast in the face, so that way we place emphasis on the face so that the viewer enters the artwork through this face, the, the facial features, which are going to have the most contrast, right? Artwork here, they're going to look around the pumpkin, and then they're going to move around in the background after moving with the details that we've added this to the tongue. Well, I just some some strokes blended in here and there. We're just softly catching the light. I'm letting it be very dry brush, uh, meaning it's very dry. Um, uh, it's dry paint on very dry surface at the moment. Whereas if it's wet paint on wet surface, it kind of moves a little bit more. But this is very a dry brush texture just so that way it's just little parts catching the light here you can add a little bit more on the stem you can see as it dries it somewhat fades so i'm just going to add just a couple little highlights here and there where different parts are catching the light and that's going to help us create this sense of form it goes in now I'm going to try and use a bit of a thicker application of paint. Okay, finally, I'm going to take some Gamvar, uh, Gamblin Gamvar gloss varnish. I'm going to pour a little bit into my designated varnish um, container and put a little. I mean a very tiny little because a little bit of liquid varnish goes quite a long way, but it also comes in spray form, so use what you got. I just prefer to use the Gamblin Gamvar uh, varnish just for its quality. I take a little bit of my paint brush and then I'm going to go up and down. As you can see, it goes very easily onto the surface. That's why we only need just a little bit. We can always add more, but we don't want to put it back into the bottle. So to go up and down, it goes like just very smoothly onto the surface and it's just going to really enrich in your colors uh, when you add varnish to your work. This is a gloss, I just prefer a gloss, but varnish also comes in a variety of different uh, finishes such as matte or satin, but I like gloss for its beautiful wet look. Um, And it's also going to protect your art and prevent it from fading. So now we have a very high gloss finish onto it. It's very important that you also go wash your gambar uh, or your brush that you've used to varnish immediately. And we're gonna let that dry. And just like that, this lovely autumn painting is done. For more art lesson tutorials, make sure you head on over to artastickids.com. It is the perfect art hub for families and kids. Uh, there's a membership there where you can find a huge resource library of art lessons that you can play at home, anywhere on any device and make art lessons, uh, art projects or artworks for holiday season themes, all kinds of different things from the comfort of your home. Find that at artastickids.com. It is the number one art website for kids and families. Another thing that you can check out is if you're a teacher, make sure you head on over to MsArtastic.com. Both the links are in the description of this video. Um, at MsArtastic.com, you can find lots of different resources for art resources for teachers to use in your classroom to suit all your different art teaching needs. 
Make sure you subscribe to the channel and like this video and I'll see you in the next episode.